Yeah, hi, welcome everyone to this new episode of uh, CUDA Mode. Today I'm super happy to have somebody here from AMD who is like really like deep into the technology. Yeah, it's it's uh, for me it's super an honor to have somebody from AMD here. We had like so much, um, of course, from Nvidia, and also of course I, I love uh, to use Nvidia technology. But I'm also like very curious to learn about other GPU vendors and their technology because I think like our CUDA Mode is not only although we have like CUDA in the name, it's actually more about really learning about parallel programming in general and not like only selected one uh, like the dominating vendor we want to know to learn also what everybody else is doing and also like amd is of course one of the very promising uh, like the the strong competitors uh, of nvidia so um yeah maybe we, we learn today a little bit uh, about rockem and and uh, the causal composable kernel technology so it's good Great to see that like a couple of people are joining here, uh, even though we are earlier than normal. Uh, this is like mainly uh, due to uh, the, the time zone in which um, today's speaker is in. So we, today we are live basically from from uh, Shanghai, from China, and this is uh, yeah it's also for the first time for us. Really great. So we will be probably uh, have the session for one hour. But then uh, I'm happy to hand over to you now, and uh, yeah. So please yeah. take over from here. Yeah, thanks, thanks Andreas. And uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Hao Tong Wang, uh, and I'm representing the Composable Kernel team at AMD to give a, a tech talk about ROCAM, about Composable Kernel. Uh, we have today, uh, we AMD uh, did uh, for AI workload. Uh, and I, I'm excited to talk uh, talking about uh, the uh, groundbreaking programming paradigm for AI tensor operators, uh, the composable kernel. And uh, I, uh, at the very first, I want to thanks for the Chao Liu, who is the uh, origin developer of the uh, composable kernel. He gave me a lot of help to make this pre presentation and a lot of suggestions talking uh, with me offline about the history of com composable kernels. So let's start. Uh, so in the first part, I will talk uh, about the uh, why the HGPU utilization is challenging, and uh, then introduce uh, our composable kernel library, and uh, le then talking something about kernel customizations use composable kernel. Uh, the last section, I will go through a uh, real code uh, implemented by composable kernel which is uh, flash attention you uh, used a lot in today's LLMs. Uh, so before diving into the details of, of composite kernel, I would call it a CK uh, in the following sections. Uh, let, let's start with some basic knowledge of ROCOM. Uh, the ROCOM, uh, or the Reading Open Computer Platform, is AMD's open source software platform for high performance computing. It provides a robust foundation for advanced computing applications, including machine learning and uh, some AI workloads. The key feature of ROCOM is open source. ROCOM is built in an open source philosophy, providing develop developers with the tools and the flexibility to inno innovate freely. And uh, it has both the performance and the scalability uh, with ROCOM. Developers can achieve high performance and scalability across a wide range of, of applications. And the ROCOM's architecture is designed to maximize the performance and efficiency, making it an ideal platform for developing and de deploying AI applications. It supports uh, different GPU architectures, even CPU programming and advanced optimization techniques allows developers to fully, fully leverage the capacities of AMD hardware. So when you say multiple GPU platforms is it, um, or architectures, is this like mainly, um, is it only limited to AMD uh, or also others? Uh, yeah, all, all, I think it's only limited to AMD hardware, yeah. Okay, thank you for clarifying. And uh, it, it, it's all, uh, let, let's go to the first of our formal section is high GPU utilization is challenging. Uh, the figure showing here is our latest uh, architecture 
pick a figure of um, MI300 MI MI series, uh, you can find it in our open source spec. Uh, it's it's a, a little bit com complicated for everyone. Uh, I, I think even even me, I, I didn't know uh, the every unit on these figures. Uh, and uh, basically, it's the uh, uh, why it's so difficult to program a high efficiency uh, GPU kernel. Uh, we need to map in custom uh, AI workloads for high GPU utilization in our real workload. Uh, but because of the following three reasons, it's kind of difficult to uh, program efficiency, efficiency and uh, uh, with high developer productivity. So the first is the complexity of the GPU programming models. Uh, it has a complicated memory hierarchy. We have global memory, shared memory, registered files, and uh, we have multiple level of caches. And uh, also we have multiple types of computer units. We have vector ALU, the DPP, which allow to do some computation among different threads. And we have matrix cores, uh, the parity of tensor cores in AMD GPU. And uh, uh, except this, we have a very rapid iteration of hardware. Makes the above uh, makes the above point even harder for ordinary users, to making it difficult to fully utilize the GPU's performance. And the second is the AI workload today is highly customizable algorithms. Uh, like five years ago, we have convolution net neural networks dominate, dominate the uh, most of AI workload, uh, and it had it's high dimensional, irregular image size, and complicated mapping. And today, uh, attention kernel is uh, one of the most popular one in the large language models. Uh, it's a filter kernel, including multiple operations. And uh, we not sure in the future uh, the repeat development of machine learning uh, will lead to a surge in customized demands. And uh, with all of that, we developers need need a tool that is suitable for repeat development while also delivering high performance on GPUs to save our time and save our money. So uh, here is the. May I have a, one, one question regarding this? Um, so yeah, yeah. Is it um, so? If, if I compile, basically, can I like directly compile from like um, all different kinds of architectures, or does it like for Nvidia, for example? I know that you spe to specify the target architectures. Is it this similar here also? Um, if I build uh, like kernels for AMD. Was it uh, automatically so? So what? What is like? The, I guess there are also like some functions which are only available, of course, like for the latest generation of hardware, and then you. Um... Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, the the hardware we uh, here we we are talking about is mainly about the AMD side, uh, like uh, uh, MI in MI one hundred, MI two hundred, and today is MI three hundred. And several days ago, uh, Lisa announced the, the MI three. 25 and 350, I think. Uh, so uh, the iteration of hardware is like uh, uh, one year. Uh, each year, I we will deliver a new hardware as well as NVIDIA side. So uh, in every year, the architecture the will, will, will evolution. And uh, so there, there's something uh, really matters to performance may change. The, uh, yeah, uh, so th this makes uh, the GPU programming as kind of difficult to achieve high uh, utilizations, yeah. Yeah, so, but as I understand, if I understand correctly, basically you abstract this as a way as much as possible. So for the like developer, most of the time they don't have to um, be aware of this and can basically they, they directly yeah. compile and will also like benefit from future uh, yes. advances. Yeah, we, we, we want to hide all this kind of hardware complexity uh, in our 
uh, kernel libraries. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's, it's a good good point to move into the next section. As Andrews just said, the GPU programming is difficult and the hardware iteration is very repeat. So how do we uh, tackle this kind of problems? Uh, so here, here is a composable kernel. Uh, this figure is uh, is uh, showing the, uh, the the first page uh, readme of the GitHub uh, composable kernel GitHub page. Uh, it's talking about the uh, hard, uh, the, the software code architecture of the composable kernel. Uh, basically, we have four levels of uh, code. Uh, the client APIs and uh, the kernels and invokers, and and then the next is templated kernels and invokers, and finally is some basic tile operators. It can it could be used for different uh, users and the experts who working in the machine learning industry, and uh, like like in in the right side we have a uh, the first three level is programmable for machine learning system experts, and the last three level was, was programmable for machine learning kernel experts. Uh, so every everyone who interested in AI could find their uh, usage and to to boost their productivity with the composable kernel. And uh, I also want to talk a little bit about the history of, of composable kernels. Uh, the development of composable kernel began in 2018, 2018 to address several challenges. Uh, at the first at the first time, the composable kernel is a feature of MI Open. Uh, if you don't know, MI Open is something like a parity of the uh, QDN is a library for convolution kernels. So a uh, composable kernel library is also first uh, want to address the problem happened in the convolution kernels because uh, at that time, convolution kernel dominated the AI workload. Uh, so uh, the first problem is that the kernels in MIOpen were, write, uh, were, were written using OpenCL and the AMD's monolithic kernel approach, it's it, it making it uh, making reuse and optimization is difficult. And the second one is that attempts to perform a kernel fusion, uh, like the, a generalizable approach. But the kernel fusion is like uh, we want to uh, fuse several different AI operators into one single kernels to reduce the uh, like uh, HBM access or the kernel launch latency. And uh, the third point is that at 2018, uh, the upcoming MI100 is AMD's first generation, first generation Tensor Core, had not yet uh, incorporated the Tensor Core algorithms. So uh, with with all of the problems and the some uh, very clever, op op as, uh, very insight uh, from the uh, original developers uh, about the AI uh, workloads, is that the mathematical experience, mathematical experiences of AI workloads are really relatively simple, uh, and with parallel patterns that can be summarized as dot product reduction element-wise operations and the format, transform, format transformation. The core of GPU optimization lies in optimizing data movement, implying that problems and the optimization methods can be generalized. And the second point is that to fuse two large oper operations each must first be broken into smaller operations. For example, different variations of the convolution operation discussed above, as well as the variety of algorithms that algorithms that may be used to implement them make it difficult to, de to develop efficient kernels. One solution to solve this complexity is to break down these 
operations into reuse reusable modules that can be universally used by different implementation of different algorithms and express a kernel as a composition of these modules. So this is where the naming from the composable kernel. And uh, the, the third point is that, is that many seemingly independent problems, such as convolution and germ, can be unified through data remapping, uh, which is a classical algorithm called Im imagine imag to call it, yeah. And uh, at 2000... I remember that one from... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that allows you to do like matrix multiplication from like uh, in, 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 basically convert the con the convolution operation into the matrix multiplication, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, at twenty uh, uh twenty twenty two, after struggling for some time to determine the right direction, the emergence of Meta's uh framework called Air Template provided a clarity. Air Template work close uh work working closely with composable kernel. And it highlighted the importance of gene-based fusion, including attention mechanisms and the necessi uh, necess necessary to uh, closely align with framework requirements for performance, which is the critical kernel customization. And this led to the creation of two fundamental pillars of the composable kernel. That is, uh, Okay, uh, the, the, the programming and the coordinate transformation. Uh, so this is a history uh, I get from Chao, uh, who is the creator of the Composable Kernel. And uh, let's talk about the design philosophies of the Composable Kernel. So first at the core, uh, it's a programming paradigm for performance, productivity, and portability. Uh, it should be systematic and self-sufficient, support all tensor operators, express all optimization techniques, and abstract all hardware uh, of AMD. Uh, so that means uh, self-sufficient means that the composable kernel doesn't need any uh, backend uh, libraries. Uh, and uh, the second point is that it, it should be composable and the reusable coding component. And the second, second core is that we, we very care about the user productivity. Uh, we have optimized the hierarchy call API course, and we are uh, writing in uh, C++ templated way. And uh, we also uh, provide a vendor op optimized high performance code which is directly developed by the AMD GPU experts. So uh, here is uh, the two pillars of, or, or, or two key abstractions in CK, uh, which I, I mentioned uh, above, is coordinate transformation primitives, uh, which is used to reduce algorithm complexity and uh, the second point is the tile programming. Uh, it's a very productive programming interface. Uh, let's take a look into them. The first one is the coordinate transforming prim uh, coordinate transformation primitives. Uh, we can see that uh, it, it has a three stage of of the uh, data mapping in a GPU. Uh, in a, GP, a typical GPU programs. Uh, so we, in the uh, lowest level, we have a row memory. Uh, it's like a one dimensional memory space uh, from zero to the maximum number uh, uh, that each GPU could have. And uh, the second level is that the, the naive, uh, we call it a naive coordinate space. Uh, it should have something like uh, 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 the, the lens and the strides, uh, like a matrix or tensors. But usually we cannot directly use these tensors in our GPU kernels because the memory space is not, it, 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 the memory of uh, the data points 
are not mapping in the correct mapping a uh, correct place we need to do some transformation to make sure that each data element is read by the uh, correct thread and uh, write into the correct uh, wrote into the correct memory space address so here is the where transform that happened so uh, ck provide a a uh, well-designed API call and uh, abstract abstraction for this kind of uh, behavior in GPU programming. Uh, in the right side, we can see that uh, for the naive uh, coordinate memory space, we have a, a API called the Make Naive Tensor View. Uh, we support making this kind of tensor view in different uh, memory space, including global memory. Uh, shared memory and uh, reduced files. And uh, if uh, if we uh, directly use this memory uh, tensor memory uh, tensor view to read or write memory uh, into to to the HBM, uh, we have we have to define the uh, memory data operation, uh, which is like a, a set. It, set is just to store the uh data into hbm or atomic add is like uh, uh we want to uh add the data from the different blocks uh together and get a final sum up and then the highest uh the, the, the top top one we have several uh uh function call to make a uh, transform the ten a naive tensor view uh we can do something like a padding uh, we can merge two dimension of the tensors. We can do some X or uh, operate operations to avo avoid the uh, memory conflict, uh, bank conflict in the shared memory. And uh, we, we, we can trace the transform the tensors to deprecate uh, like a, a arbitrary dimension of the tensors. And we can transform uh, the, the, the the tensor uh, multiple times. Like we can pad and merge, and after that we freeze something. Uh, we we then we we do some XOR transform, something like that. It's very fl uh, flexible, and uh, it could do anything you want you want to do to get the correct data remapping. Yeah, that's super, super interesting. One question regarding this, like for example, uh, pad transform. Is it then there? So there is, is there copying happening under the hood, or is it is it directly, directly only basically working on the excess patterns that it somehow then um, like virtually sort of so pads pads it? Um, and all, the, all those for the other things. And the and the naive tensor view is the naive tensor view what I would expect as this like multi-dimensional. Um, like array with normally as sprites, which are in a certain um, like order in in memory. So uh, and then basically this like this transform coordinate space is like always translating these coordinates. Um, so basically the addresses for the access. Um, or how how should I like uh, imagine? Yeah, this? yes, I I, I see. Uh, it's uh, not very clear in uh, in current page. Uh, let's try to. It, uh, understand it uh, in an uh, example. So uh, here is a, a, a like a thirty line of code to uh, illustrate the uh, data remapping of the in Palace Gym convolution example. Uh, it, it's just a, a explain how to use the uh, coordinate transform to uh, coding the emit colon uh, just mentioned and. Uh, uh, algorithms uh, in composable kernel way. So first line is like uh, the, the 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 goal of this uh, this code is to uh, mapping the uh, input tensors, which is NHWC, uh, into the uh, gem, uh, which is two dimensional matrix, uh, the gem M and the gem K. Uh, so here is uh, where we start. So the naive tensor uh, we, we we got from the uh, like a kernel API, uh, we we have its batch number, we have its height, 
the weight and the channel number. Uh, I I put it here. I put it here in NHWC way, and uh, we we need several uh, several uh, transformation to uh, convert the tensor from the NHWC to the gym M a uh, gym M and the gym K. Uh, here we we we're just talking about the. Uh, descriptor of the tensor. So the, the, the underlying buffer it doesn't change at all. We just uh, modify the way we we mapping the thread. We mapping the GPU thread to the uh, memory space. So uh, here all is talk, talking about the, 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 the view, the different view of the tensors. Uh, so first, uh, we we make a naive tensor view. Uh, we we start from here, and uh, then we do do a function call called the transform tensor view. Uh, transform tensor view support. Uh, we we need the uh, the the, uh, the the tensor view need to be which need to be transformed, and the the, the transform formation uh, to uh, each dimension. And uh, the uh, and the, the the following two lines is uh talk, is talking about uh, describe the uh, dimensional dimension in previous tensor view and uh, in current tensor view. So here we have uh, the the first transform is kind of easy to understand. Uh, we we do nothing for the uh, the batch and uh, for the channel. Uh, but we want to pad the height um, and the widest of the input imaging. So we made a pad transform for the uh, height and the widest, and we do nothing. We just pass through the dimension of batch and the channel. And the, the dimension, dimension order doesn't change. So uh, it's uh, correct corresponding to each uh, each one the previous tensor view and the current tensor view so it's zero zero one one two two three yeah, this is super interesting but how does so here for example the, the padding work because padding which like normally i would expect if, if i do it with a copy operation i would have to add additional elements for example zeros or something which would be there or maybe it's like is it a different yeah. padding operation or... uh the 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 padding under 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 the function core is kind of uh complicated. Uh, so we can uh look into the code and see how it works. But okay, okay. <laughs> the thing I want to sh share here is the coordinate transformation. So we can use such a uh, direct uh, function call and easy function call to get a, a very powerful data remapping. Yeah. Yeah, so, but as a user now, I would basically pad it in maybe like um, whatever is the padding number there and then have access, like put access these coordinates um, which are in these padded regions um, without like Darren needing to care about what's underlying in the memory and so on. Uh, okay, I, I think uh, I think the padding happen here is like uh, uh, padding zero. Uh, it it's, doesn't really padding uh, pad the zeros into the uh, memory buffer, uh, but we we will uh, do uh, like a auto auto bound uh, check for the memory access instructions. Uh, we 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 load the memory uh, we load the data from memory through this memory accessing instructions. Uh, in uh, like uh, uh, built-in functions or, or something like that. Uh, if this if this uh, is auto bound, we will uh, return zero uh, in the lowest level uh, function call. Uh, that means we we still uh, read the data from the memory buffer, but uh, if uh, if we made this kind of pad transform. We will have a bound for it. If this uh, thread read the data auto bound, we will set all the value uh, uh, get from this thread to zero. So this is what padding happens. 
It's super. Thank you very much because I am always interested in how the magic works. <laughs> in, okay. In, yeah. uh, <laughs> thank you very much. The, the next step is mapping to the uh, to the left side is uh, the embedding operation uh, because uh, the 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 uh, the input imaging and the output imaging uh, the hat and the widths is not directly mapped. It's uh in it's it is uh, including two dimensional the filters uh width and the height and the input filter and the width then we get the outputters outputs output imagines uh height and width and uh, here is we 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 uh uh make all this kind of trans uh data remapping into a function call called make embedded transform. Uh, so uh, here, 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 and then, and then we also do nothing for the uh, batch and the channel here, and we so the, but but we we get more more uh, dimension correct uh, now because we uh, we we make uh, another uh, we make two two dimensions from the one dimension uh in the left figure so the five the uh input images height will uh become two uh two two uh two two dimension which is the uh height of filters and the, the height of output images uh so the uh the, the first dimension will become the uh the first and the, the, the uh, not the first uh the, the one and the two dimension of the uh transformed tensor views and so uh here uh the, the four dimension tensor become the six dimensional and finally we can merge the six dimensional into the Two dimension. Uh, the two dimension is the uh, the gems uh, M M and K. Uh, here we use the uh, merge transform uh, to merge the uh, three dimension of the uh, uh, of the previous tensor view uh, into one dimension, and uh, again for another three dimension for to to the gem gem K. Yeah. Uh, so uh, with, with this kind of coordinate transformation, we map the data uh, from a naive tensor view of NHWC uh, to a directly usable uh, tensor view uh, can could be uh, used to uh, calculate the data in gen, uh, in, in gen uh, which is the uh, we, we call it a source GMM uh, and the GMK. Uh, it, it's just the naming, but it could be used to do some GM uh, operations. But this is super cool. So that, that means like the underlying buffer is basically not like changed or duplicated or somehow expanded or so. It's like this is like happening everything basically through the code, like which is like here through this like advanced tens of views. Yeah. And then you can do a, like execute the full convolution operation um, in an efficient with an efficient uh, matrix multiplication and all the indexing is basically here abstracted and uh, metrically uh, calculated. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, nice. And uh, the second point, uh, the, the second pillar of the CK is tail programming. Uh, so the tail programming is aimed to have such goals. Uh, the non-compromised productivity and the performance. So uh, we want non-GPU experts can write functional kernels, so they can leverage the the, the performance of the our latest GPU directly, and the, the GPU experts can hyper-optimize kernels. And the third point is architecture architectural independent code. Uh, the design decision is that only the tile level interface, uh, both for the tensor operator and the 
operand to hide the GPU complexity. And the, and the interface reflects the conceptual data layout for math and able to express all optimizations. And the, uh, the, the solution is we have a, a, a distributed tensor, which is a tile level view of data structure, regardless of private memory space, and generalize a set of reusable tile level operators and APIs. And we have a policy for each, each kernel, uh, each type of templated kernels to inject optimizations. Uh, so with this kind of word is maybe kind of confusing. So let's go to the next slide to illustrate it with a figure. Uh, so here is how tile programming works. Uh, so in the left side is our uh, a typical uh, memory hierarchy in GPU. So we have a G, uh, GPU grid, block, uh, thread, we have a shared memory, we have HBM, we uh, we have a, like a off-trip memory and on-trip memories, uh, a lot of data through threads. Uh, so what here, uh, what tail programming do is that we de uh, describe a, a, a tensor or a buffer in two dimensional, it's like just like a tile. Uh, uh, so here we describe uh, uh, basically a, a very general uh, AI, AI kernels we need to do uh, a gem-based gem kernel. Uh, what, what happened here is that uh, we read the data from the HBM uh, and we calculate it in the, uh, with the tensor core and uh, and then we, we store the result back to the uh, uh, the global memory so uh, what what CK do here is that we uh, we, we abstract all the uh, operations in tail in tail level so we uh, we described the data uh, with the two-dimensional uh, if we 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 use gen we use gen as an example, the gen usually is an operation that uh, matrix M K uh, multiply matrix N K. Uh, so if we 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 load the input uh, input matrix of the uh, uh, the the the, the gen operations, we load the tire from HBM into all threads register, re registers. And the, the blue blue one is uh, the, what we call the static uh, static uh, distributed tensors. Uh, they are the data in, uh, in, 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 uh, in registers. And then the red block is what we call the tail window. The tail window is the data stored in uh, HBM or shared memory because we read or uh, store a lot of store this data in a in in a, a wave or a warp way, uh, not per thread, but in this dist uh, static distributed tensor, uh, we we read it in per thread way. Uh, but the API, uh, the the data movement API is unified. We load the tail, we store the tail, we load the tail. Uh, and then we, we, we do some calculation and then we store the tile back to the LDS. We shuffle it uh, in, in a more uh, coalescing way. And uh, we, we load the tile for shared memory and store them back into the, uh, in, into the uh, HBM. So everything happening here is in tail way. It's very productivity. And uh, for every develop, developers who uh, who utilize CK to develop their own GPU kernels. Uh, uh, this might be more impressive that we we use just a several, uh, like 20s or 30s lines of code with the tail programming CKs, uh, one of the CK feature to implement the flash attention for the parts uh, core core loop of it. So uh, the, 
each each code, uh, each line of algorithms, uh, in the original uh trade-offs flash attention paper, um, mapping to the right side, the real real code in the uh composable kernel. Uh, so you can see that, uh, we have something like a DRAM windows. Uh, we we, we have something like a static dis distributed tensors. Uh. And then we we have like a, a block tear reduce sync, uh, which which is a, a reduce re reduction operators. Uh, we will go through this this kind a uh, this this example in the uh row count flash flash attention section. And and one question regarding this: so the uh, it's also the performance. So is it um like would you say that it's an optimal performance or is it very good? Performance. Uh, I don't know. Uh, compared, for example, um, I don't know. Maybe you're like during development. You also compare it to the the official flash attention implementation. I mean, it seems like very very compact. Um, and, yeah. And this, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, this very compact one is a uh, good good performance, not optimal performance. Yeah. If we want uh, optimal performance, we may need to do some something more. Yeah. Uh, and I believe, uh, in, in Nvidia side, if they want to get a uh, optimal performance kernel, they need to do something more. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Th thank you very much. So, but it's like very impressive that it's that it's possible like to to write in this very compact uh, way. Yeah. 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 So. Uh. So, uh, next section would be kernel customizations. Uh, kernel customization is one of the most important, uh, uh, I would say, ability for composable kernels, because we can use uh, our library to customize uh, existed kernels uh, very quickly, uh, like gem plus any epilogues or gem plus uh, quantizations or something like a gem plus gem. Or we can develop a, a new kernel, new fused kernel very quickly, use our reusable uh, components. Uh, so this is the overview of a basic composable kernel uh, construction, uh, construction. So we, we have a pipeline, uh, uh, which is the main kernels uh, do. Uh, what main kernels do, and then the the the, the epilogues was uh, so, and then after all com uh, computation and data move, uh, almost all of the data move movement done, uh, we want to do something more like element wise operations for the result tensor. We we make the heaven here, and in the pipeline side, we usually have the uh, the the three one three one the problem and the tail pipeline and the policy. Uh, the problem is described uh, like uh, uh, what 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 parameter what parameter we need need to describe the specific kernels and the tail level AP pipeline is like what we will do in block level and the policy is to uh, optimization uh, we are applied to the tail pipeline uh, to achieve a uh, good or optimal uh, performance. And uh, all this tail pipeline or tail pipeline optimization would be based on uh, two pillars of the composable kernel, which, which are tail programming API and the coordinate transformation primitives. Uh, so the, the pipeline here is like a, a abstraction, like a composer, the data movement and the computation component. And the tail programming API uh, underlying to provide an intuitive and a productive programming interface. And the policy here is the, uh, the all the optimization applied to specific pipelines. They define how data moved and uh, the computation happened. And uh, the coordinate transformation primitive is to hide the complexity of the of specific algorithms. 
uh, so we, we have a lot of vendor optimized kernels, which is optimized by AMD GPU experts. Uh, in, in such a way, we go through all of the right block here. Uh, we, we use the ven vendor optimized tile pipeline. We use the vendor defined tile pipeline optimizations. Uh, and if, if user want to customize their own kernel or own kernel optimizations to the exist kernel, uh, they will go through the right, uh, this green block. So user can, user can customize their own pipeline, tile pipeline, or the, uh, they, they want to try different optimization can, and see if they can achieve higher, higher performance in their, uh, specific problem cases, or they, they start, or they want to start from the very beginning to uh, develop a very fancy, very new kernels. And uh, that would be very, very easy using the latest, latest feature of the composable kernels. So I have two, I have two questions uh, here. The, the first one is like the, the, for example, let's say in Epilog, I would do uh, like com combine some some pointwise operation, let's say like a redo or something. Um, this is would be something I could add as an as an epilogue, epilogue there. Yeah. And is uh, is it like then one like one like fused into one single kernel, which is um, later executed in this like when when it's so called pipeline? Is it is it like multiple kernels launched after another, or is it uh, like directly one uh, yeah, launch it, command? It it would be in in one single kernel, yeah. So it's a fuse. Okay, cool. And then um, you said like this vendor specific, uh, those AMD specific uh, optimized uh, kernels, are they somehow like in in the source code so that, that it's like directly compiled? Or is it in a library which is then linked um, to uh, this from the compiler? Or the... They, they, are, they are all open source, the source code level. So it's a C++. Okay, cool. So this every everything and the compiler when we when talk about compiler here is like this hip uh, C plus plus um thing or what yeah. is uh, what is it? Yeah, we we compare this uh code using, uh I mean uh I think it, uh currently would be C long, eighteen or okay. seventeen yeah something like that and we will have a compiler called a hip CC yeah. Ah okay because there was also a question from Uber Maximus um. Uh, if, if OpenCL or HIP uh, would be used in general for this? Uh... Oh, oh we, 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 we will not use OpenCL, we use HIP. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, here is a, 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 the, the different part uh, may, uh, could be used or maintained by different people. Uh, so if you want to implement a new kernel, you, you can uh, see that that uh, that's block. Uh, you might need to customize your own, uh, you develop your own pipeline. Like, uh, I, I want to do a uh, customized kernel, which including like five or 10 gems with uh, two convolutions, something like that. Uh, you can implement in your own way in the pipeline and including how how what, how you want to uh, optimize the, use the policy. So everything will, uh, developed by yourself, except the uh, lowest level, uh, the two pillars, the tile programming API and according to the transformation primitives. They are maintained by the AMD GPU expert and they help you programming on the AMD GPU without the tears. And if you want to implement a new optimization to existing kernels, you can just uh, this uh, deep, deep green part you can customize your own, you, you can customize the tile pipeline. You can customize the uh, tile pipeline optimization, which we call the policy. Uh, so uh, everything would be very clear in the composable kernel and the uh, different people can find their different way to utilize the composable kernel to achieve a high utilization of the GPU. And uh, the, the, the last part would be Rokan flash attention. Uh, Rokan flash, uh, flash attention is uh, de uh, developed based on the uh, paper of the trade off, uh, the flash attention. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I think it, it, I think we it, it it would be a little bit uh complicated if we want to dive dive into it. Uh, I I would say it is a kind of complicated uh operators which fuse the uh two gems and the softmax uh together into one single kernel. It will boost uh performance of the uh, large language models a lot and uh, used a lot in today's uh, real uh, industry, uh, uh, machine learning industry. And uh, we, uh, we, we uh, CK developed a, a very high, perf high performance uh, flash retention kernels, uh, use the CK, uh, use the two, uh, meaning rely rely on the two pillars uh, I mentioned, uh, like uh, the coordinate transformation and uh, the uh, the tail programming. Uh, so uh, I want to like uh, first go through the uh, real code that we ha we have. Uh, so. Uh, Andrews, I will... Basically, also this, like, the, the result of this is uh, like that you have a fork, like AMD did, did, a, fork, did a fork of the flash attention um, uh, uh, repository we... and has like an AMD specific um, version, basically, which also allows to oh, use oh, the okay. similar. Okay, maybe we can, we can, yeah, we, we can move to this slide, uh, this page. So, uh, just as Andrews said, we previously meant, uh, uh, the, the kernel just I mentioned is inside the composable kernel GitHub page. It's a C++, C++ kernel, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's and previously we also have a fork of the upstream flash tension of the trade off lab uh, maintained in a Rokam, maintained in a uh, Rokam GitHub repo called the Rokam flash tension. Uh, but uh, today we. Uh, we want to upstream uh, all the works we are. So we we, we create a PR uh, for the uh, trade-offs of uh, flash attention too. Uh, so it, it including the uh, flash attention forward pass and the backward pass with the, I think it will uh, including the uh, optimized performance for AMD GPU uh, in the end of this month. Uh, the, the PR is in review. Uh, and the many, uh, actually, many people already uh, used them to get a very, uh, very uh, good performance on the flash attention uh, right in, in composable kernel. Yeah. Uh, except that uh, composable, uh, a composable kernel uh, indeed impact a lot. Uh, we. We integrate uh, the our attention kernels into the X formers. Uh, we we training our, our large language models with uh, AMD Semi two hundred and fifty GPUs, uh, and we we deliver a uh, very competitive performance claims and the industry leading inference uh, inference performance on AMD's instinct instinct uh, MS three hundred X. And we 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 like ex accelerate the stable diffusion inference with the Onyx runtime. Uh, and then we also uh, available uh, in the PyTorch as as one of the backend. Uh, yes, uh, composable actually is uh, uh, in in a, a take a very uh, important in very important position in AMD's. Uh, machine learning ecosystems. <coughs> yes. Yeah, super cool. Um, so one question I've had all the all the time is uh, everybody give give uh, Hong Thong a, a big, uh, big thumbs up emoji. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, so one one main question I had like if I wanted to start uh, like. Playing around with um, composite kernel with AMD, Rockham, and so on. What's like the the entry level? As so what what would be the best way? Should I? Is it basically only available for the like um, 
like the larger, like the M MI 100s, 250, 300X, and so on? Or can I also do it with ordinary AMD GPUs, like for gaming GPUs? And so what would be the, the best entry? Should I go to the cloud provider to, um, to play around a little bit yeah. with the GPU? Uh, the, the latest feature uh, has not supported the gaming, gaming GPU yet, uh, but uh, they are definitely in our plan. Uh, for people who, uh, yeah, I, I, I understand that uh, the uh, data center GPU is not owned by most of the peoples, uh, but we, we are working with uh, 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 like a more cloud, cloud service provide, uh, providers to uh, enable our uh, in, enable our AMD GPUs on their cloud. Uh, I, I think uh, Microsoft also uh, have some instance of, with the AMD GPU, right? I, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, using cloud service might be a uh, entry point to uh, experience the AMD GPU uh, and the composable kernels. And uh, I do have some uh, entry level code. Uh, I, I put all the code into a, a orphan branch called the CKTL toy uh, of the composable kernel GitHub. So you can reach out and try it uh, yourself uh, anytime. Uh, so here, here is the where where uh, where we, uh, the first example would be the gen. Uh, here we uh, directly into in, into the kernel inside. Uh, so there there would be more straight uh, straightforward. Uh, so first we we will have two tail windows called uh, a block window and a b block window. Uh, they describe the uh, how data uh, the the uh, light in the uh, global memory buffer. Uh, here, the A grade is a, a pointer to the uh, global memory, and here, uh, the tuple of KM per block and the K KK per block is the tile of this uh, matrix. So it is M by K, a typical input of the gen. And the here, the IM and the zero is the uh, we, we we see it has origin of the uh, tail window for different blocks because uh, like a different blocks needed to different data of the global bar, uh, global memories in gen problem. So same thing uh, happened for the B block window. So we we now have the uh, block window A and the block window B. So we described how uh, how they lie in the uh, row memories. And the second, we define uh, a, 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 a variable called block gen pipeline. Block gen pipeline is uh, provided by the policy. Policy is just mentioned is a optimization, defined uh, define optimization. Uh, we have this pipeline and uh, it uh, embedded how the gen compute and uh, what it need, like the size of shared memory here. We we call we call uh, we get the size of a shared memory by a simple uh, function call called a get static uh, local share local data share size, and then we directly call the operator of the block gen pipeline, and the input the uh, block window we just created, uh, and the some uh, element wise function if we want to do to the input A of B after we read them from global memory. And uh, the K divided KK per block is the loop number of the, uh, the, the whole kernel. And uh, with the pointer to the shared memory, uh, we have everything uh, we need to uh, compute, uh, to, to uh, describe the data movement and the compute computation. And we will get a result called a uh, accumulator block tile from this uh, this pipeline output. 
uh, so uh, the accumulator would be in a, a kind of a high pre high precision. We needed to convert acetate down, then store back to the uh, uh, to to the global memory. So here's what happened. We will do a element wise operations for uh, co uh, called a type compare uh, convert to the to the accumulators and get the result of C. Then uh, we also describe this uh, result uh, as a tile window with the tile size of uh, km per block by km per block. Uh, also a typical output size of the uh, jumper problem. And then finally, we store all the data by a simple function call called a uh, uh, store tile. So it's, uh, this is how our gem uh, worked. Uh, here the block gem pipeline is like uh, AMD provided pipeline, but you can you can also uh, 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 customize your own one. Uh, this one might be a uh, most naive, naive, naive sample because uh, I want to uh, just use it uh, as a showcase. So and one question regarding this uh, uh, is: it, So, what are the data types? Is it like a template function, and you could like use different data, compile it with different data types, or is it specific for, I don't know, like float thirty two or? Um... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can uh, basically the composable kernel is a template uh, library, so you can define your your own uh, data type uh, based on the problem problem I just mentioned. Also, a part of the uh, kernel. So here you can you can uh, decide the A data type, B data type, or C data type, type something like that. Uh, in the maybe uh, so here, yeah, here here is uh, when you uh, insta uh, instantiate instantiate your uh, your, your kernel with the template, you can this this uh, define your own data type. Uh, so here is a IP sixteen or multiply IP sixteen. The output is also uh, IP sixteen. Is it uh, so? For example, you, um, if I would now like go go further down uh, into like more extreme quantization, then it, I would probably to do uh, something special, right? So this is like half is pro is probably the the lowest uh, officially supported data type? Or is there something even yeah, uh, in, in 8 bit, like FP8, something comparable to FP8, for example? I think yes. FP8 is actually uh, two types, of course, but. Uh... Yeah, uh, for FP8, or uh, the, the kernel, the giant kernel needed quantization, uh, we, can, or we can also reuse this kernel to get it functional. But uh, it's hard to get uh, best of performance uh, with this kernel uh, because uh, the quantization with the IP8 uh, usually need uh, uh, we we need to read some extra scale vector or matrix from the global memory, and uh, if we directly uh, embed them into the current uh, gen pipeline, which is a pure uh, de uh, designed for pure gen. Uh, the template would be interrupted and uh, uh, will, uh, which would be hurt the performance a lot. So uh, if you just want to get a functional quantization gen, it's okay. But you, if you want to get an optimal uh, performance, uh, you need more effort to optimize it. But pro probably then also in the future, the uh, composable kernel library would be something where if AMD provides something like this would probably appear or come up. If we're like, for, for example, like specific quantization um, yeah, algorithms. Yeah, def yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we, we already have some uh, some IP8 kernels and uh, with very good performance, yeah. Okay, yeah, great, thank you. Uh, and the second example I want to show is the flash attention forward pass. Uh, and again, uh, this is a, we, uh, a version had a good performance, not optimal one. 
if you want to get the optimal one, you can go to our developer branch. Uh, they have uh, they they have our open source and the product level kernel. You can directly play with it. Uh, it's a very uh, it's a, uh, a totally parity of the flash attention tool has all of the features you need to uh, inference. And uh, here is where we start as the kernel. So uh, the same as the gen kernels, we have to make a, a, like a tail windows and the tail windows is based on the naive tensor views. And uh, after make this, uh, uh, this tail windows and the, like a, a static dis distributed tensors, uh, they are all all two dimensional, uh, which is tail programming. Uh, I just mentioned. Could you, could you zoom a little bit? Um, oh, like just one, okay. one or two. Uh, Too small, right? Uh, it's it's yeah, it's it's readable for me, but I fear in the on the video, otherwise it's uh, lost. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, so that's very good. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Here we uh, de define all of the tail windows and the, the static distributed tensors. We needed to uh, describe the data movement and the calculations. Uh, here we also get get the pipeline from the uh, policy, the uh, the, uh, the flash attention tool, including two gems. So uh, we, we, we will have, basically have, we will have a two pipeline, uh, but uh, the second gen, which, which is gem one, is embedded in the pipeline of gem zero. So here we get the gem zero's pipeline and the, uh, the, the operator of the gem one. Uh, now here is all the data type we need to prepare for the intermediate uh, results, uh, which usually happened uh, occurred in the uh, fused kernels because we need to reuse the uh, intermediate data which is stored on the uh, on-chip on memories. Okay, uh, and then uh, from the loop over, we start here. So uh, as you can see, once we prepared everything ready, uh, we just put the uh, into the specific uh, function call, like uh, we have a uh, first gen is which is a matrix Q multiply matrix K, so we put it into the gem zero pipeline, uh, and because the uh, matrix Q is reusable in the loop over, so we also prepare a buffer to store the register. Uh, to store the result of the, uh, not result, is the data loaded from the global memory for Q, so that we, we don't need to uh, re uh, load it repeatedly, which is uh, uh, definitely hurt, hurt the performance. And uh, then uh, we, we just repeat something. Uh, the, the whole pipeline is written in the Terror programming, so you can't see any complexity. Uh, complexity, you can mapping each line directly to the original paper. Uh, we do some uh, gen, which is Q multiply K, and we have a result of the S. Uh, but we need to cast it down to re re reuse it. Uh, here we prefer actually. Uh, v, which is the input of the second gen. Uh, here we do some soft max. Uh, we pre pre prepare the, uh, the, the, the lo local max, <coughs> uh, lo lo local max value. Uh, we also have a, a tail function, a tail function call of the reduction operation, uh, which is do the soft max actually here. Uh, after after that, uh, after the soft max operation, we have an uh, intermediate uh, uh, result of a P, uh, which is the input of the second gen. Okay, uh, yes, uh, after reduction, we also need to do some uh, exposure. Uh, it's a part of uh, soft max. Uh, 
OK。Then after softmax is done, uh, we go into the second gen. Uh, here is the second gen. Uh, we can also uh make it as a uh also make it as a pipeline, but uh, uh we want to uh get more performance from it. So, uh, we simply uh like break down the uh whole pipeline, but. Uh, the components still use the tire programming, so it, it would not be difficult to understand. Uh, so it's uh, we load the load the data from HBM, and uh, we uh, we we put input them uh, into the gym uh, gym operator get a result. Uh, we need to blockwise synchronization because uh, we we will have some. A shared memory operation inside of the gem, uh, gem function call, and the loop it over, uh, like uh, store the data read from the uh, global memory to the shared memory, and uh, once once the shared memory is ready, uh, we call the uh, blockwise gem. Okay, and uh, after the second gem is done, we loop over. Uh, loop loop all the over, and we have a final result of O, which is a uh, a uh, 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 which is represent in a high pres high precision, uh, most likely IP thirty two. Uh, and we need to do some extra steps to uh like just like a epilog or something, uh to cast it down to the uh real res uh, real result uh, format, uh, and we we made a, we make a final uh tile window, uh, to store the result, which is all DRAM window, and then the final step we need to do is uh, store the result to that DRAM window, uh, which is uh, write back uh, write out the result matrix to the global memory, and uh, yeah, that's we how we. Uh, implemented basically, it's almost uh, how we implemented the flash retention. A very complicated kernel use a composable kernel uh, pro programming paradigm. Uh, the whole file is like uh, uh, for users, it's like uh, like two hundred or three uh, two hundred lines of code, uh, maybe less like less like two hundred in the actual function uh, so it would be super easy to implement it, uh, such kind of uh, highly customized uh, kernel fusion so uh, this is yeah the, thank, thank you very much for this like deep inside view um also like uh, for and for and like this is like i think already i would say you say like super easy but i think this is this of course requires also some um like uh, experience with the uh with the composable kernel library to like write uh, uh something like a flash attention kernel but it's super uh great to see that this is um possible but whether is there some limit at at which you then run, which you run into when the kernel basically becomes too too complicated too big uh, is it then generating compiled error or is it is it like Barely possible that that you could run. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. You, if we, uh, in, in in my personal experience, if we made something, uh, as as I would say, if very complex, complexable, uh, the most uh, problem, uh, is that resource because, uh, we have very limited, uh, resource on the GPU. Like we have, uh, uh. Maybe maybe somebody uh, don't know. Uh, in AMD GPU, we mostly can access uh, 512 uh, VGPR uh, all the registers uh, per thread in programming model, and uh, we have 16 uh, 64 kilobytes of the shared memory. Uh, maybe a kind of small compared to the uh, hopper or uh, something 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 like that. Uh, so it. Uh, users may need to care for uh, how many resources they will use. Uh, or if the 
and reduce the build, uh, the performance definitely definitely were not good at all. Yeah, I think this is always the, the case that you have to uh, <laughs> yeah, take yeah, into yeah. account which which architecture, which uh, if you like really, really want to like uh, specifically optimize for a certain architecture. Do you have like time for some like re remaining questions which we had during the talk, um, which we which were not answered? Uh, it was like um, so. First of all, thank you very much for this like uh, presentation and introducing the composable kernel to to all of us. Um, yeah, there was one question. Um, I know AMD is working hard on Triton support also. What's the difference in scope and uh, some custom AMD stuff that can't be expressed by Triton? This uh, John Turner asked this. Uh, yes. Do you know Triton a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I, I, know, I know Triton. Uh, Triton. Triton works really hard to uh, support uh, the different AI workloads. And uh, we do have many customers use AMD Triton to uh, boost their workload. And the Triton and the Composable Kernel is like a, a, a two kind of way to boost the AI workload. Triton is to uh, Triton is like a very generalized uh, way to uh, to to accelerate the GPU programming. Uh, it's used by many people, and it's a a kind of a very general approach. Uh, I would say very general optimization approach. However, the composable kernel is like uh, something very highly customizable. And uh, we developers have many uh, uh, high, uh, like a uh, uh, fine grade control. We can control the pipeline very uh, in fine grained way. So uh, I think both uh, Triton and the composable kernel is a very powerful, powerful tool to program on the uh, AMD GPU, and uh, yes, Triton is uh, AMD GPU's Triton is definitely uh, actively update, upgrade, and we will boost the performance. Uh, definitely, uh, we have a lot of customers for it. Yeah. Okay, then the maybe related question that was um, I'm not sure it was for, uh, about the compile time. Uh, so what's normally the compile time you would expect for um, composable kernel? So like it's all obviously like C++ uh, template templated always takes a little bit of time to compile. Um, uh, uh, if we consider compile, uh, it, it, it definitely depends on the kernel type. Uh, the more com complicated kernel will take more times to compile. Uh, it's definitely that, like that. Uh, and the compare time, I think the most uh, prob maybe problem one is that uh, because we are C plus plus templated kernel, uh, if we want to uh, like compare like tens of hundreds of uh, kernels at the same time, it will take a, a long time. I would say here, yeah. and uh, we have a we have a profiler called the CK profiler. Uh, 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 it, it's something like uh, we are uh, enable all of the available uh, kernels, uh, and uh, if you uh, it will give you a uh, exhaustive search. Uh, if you want to two uh, specific operators like gen or or convolutions, it will give you best performance. But uh, yes, it will take uh, many compare times. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, if you just compare uh, specific operators like Gen, I think it, it, it's, uh, it will be less than 10 minutes. But if you want to, uh, I, when I'm talking about uh, Gen operators in SQL Profiler, I mean like uh, all data types and the layouts and uh, with a lot of tile uh, size. Uh, so it is. It will take about uh, ten minutes or twenty minutes less than that. Depends on the CPU you have, uh, and uh, if if it's uh, you want to compare all of the uh, op operators bought by Composable Kernel, I, I would say it will take more than an hour. Yeah. Okay, and and, and this like related maybe to this uh, question. Like, um, if I have like many different uh, shapes of data. Is it um, is there also like are there different kernels somehow compiled or can I compile them? Um, 
yeah, with composable kernels, like the, I have like one template, and it's like applied for all different shapes of data which I use. Is, uh, is, it, is there an optimization like necessary? For for example, um, I don't know. Like for, if from try to, for example, you have different uh, ways like to decide like how the launch grid should look, look like for a different for a specific size of tensor that you process. Is this also something you do here in um, the composable kernels? Uh, yeah, I think uh, this is uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, problems we need to address in the future. Uh, because we uh, accept the the the, the CK profiler I just mentioned. Uh, CK profiler once you profile it, uh, you you once you compile it, you it support uh, almost all the problems you want to uh, you want to address, but. Uh, if you don't don't compare a composable uh, CK profiler, uh, it has some client API and some examples, uh, but the, their their coverage will not as wide as CK profiler. So, uh, if you really have many problem size uh, for different types data types for different size or even for different operators. Uh, I definitely recommend you compare the CK profiler, although it will take uh, more time, but uh, it has the uh, uh, highest coverage and uh, best performance, yeah. Okay, Thomas, you had also a question. Do you want to uh, like personally ask? <laughs> I, sorry, I can't hear you. Are you still muted, maybe? Let's see. If Oh, I, I, uh, I, I can read it out. Like Thomas uh, asked a bit of a mean question, sorry, with the variety of GPUs and networks appearing, my guess would be that uh, on the fly generation of kernels, Triton, Mosaic, and so on, probably needs to get close to the um, pre-compiled ones at this. Um, what can we learn from composable kernels for on the fly generation? Thanks. Uh... If anything. I, th <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, I, sorry, it's a mean question. I'll admit that. Now it's working. The, the order thinks, Thomas. Yeah. On the fly generation of kernels. Uh, I mean, this is like probably like a little bit in 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 competition. Also, what came from the for the the users, what they want. Also, um, I mean, the JIT compilation sometimes, um, of course, has some overheads, and you. Um, but has also some advantage that you can basically directly for the, the GPU at hand uh, compile. And it's like, yeah, currently, as I, I think it's not, not very, really clear because, like, except like Triton, they, they are very accessible. And um, on the other hand, yeah, this, well, as you said, uh, the C libraries are, are both from like all vendors, basically, also like composable kernels, they, um, they have, they're very, comp like, they, they give you access to like much more details than, for example, what you can get in. Uh, like the vanilla um, Triton, at least, I would say. Yeah, uh, only fly compare. I, I'm not sure is it, but uh, I mean, uh, in in our product level, uh, flash attention, uh, we do, uh, we do have such a such kind of, uh, uh, but I think it's still pre compare. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, so to to my mind, like the composable kernels, and I'm very Mickey Mousey here, and not fair. It's similar to Cutlass in spirit, right? Yeah, gives you um, some things to build on top of that. Um, and so, uh, uh, and then you have Triton, which kind of has a it doesn't it, it doesn't you can't access all the details of your of your hardware. Um, but it has the advantage that you could, like, put compile does generate Triton code on the fly and then dump get kernel code from or, or compiled kernels from that. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so it, 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 somehow I'm thinking that, well, yeah, there's a gap, and then I'm seeing that, for example, there's this. I happen to work a lot with with uh, uh, Envy Fuser, which kind of tries to bridge that gap by having a lot of things about the hardware, 
but generating kernels on the fly? Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, if we have a way to address, uh, to to leverage the composable kernel uh, to on the fly com compare, uh, I think one way is to uh, porting the composable kernel in uh, more uh, low level language like LVMIR, uh, just like what Triton do. Uh, so the, the, the real backend of the uh, Triton is on IR level optimization. So uh, if we can do it in such a way, uh, we have we will have much shorter compare time definitely. But we need to uh, work it like um, in LVMIR level, I think. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much for, for all the information. There's also one like remaining question, I think, uh, whether you you will, are hanging out on, on CUDA mode Discord. I don't know, do you want to share your, your username? Your, uh, or, uh, yeah, uh, my, my, my username is, uh, I think, at by Andrews, right? Uh, uh, A-S-K-A? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I will okay. uh, active in, in, in the Discord channel. Uh, most likely the Rokam channel, right? We, we have one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, but I located the uh, I located in uh, Shanghai, China, so the, the time zone might be different from most of you. Uh, so my reply may not very fast. <laughs> so may maybe you ask the question in the night. I I, I will see the message in the morning. So <laughs> something like that. So uh, if you don't mind that, you can ask anything about the uh, AMD GPU or composable kernel on the CUDA mode. Uh, a Rokam channel, I will reply to you. If I can uh, reply to it, it if, if, if I know the answer, okay. I also, yes. uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for this offer. And of course, I think everybody's understanding that, uh, uh, yeah, if you have time, just let's come by and, and look, have a look. And, and if you answer something, everybody will be happy. Otherwise, we also can hopefully gather some people like working with uh, AMD technology there and they can help them themselves, each yeah. other. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, also, we, we, uh, yeah, I also saw a very interesting question from the chat. Uh, uh, he said, uh, anything that Python can learn from the CK, right? Uh, I think uh, uh, Triton can learn many from CK is that uh, CK have many uh, op optimizing op optimizing uh, optimization techniques could be learned from. Uh, we have a very high performance gen. We have very high performance uh, flash attention. And uh, actually, I did uh, a lot of uh, optimization optimization knowledge share inside AMD uh, to multiple uh, kernel libraries, including Triton, uh, including Triton. So. Uh, uh, Triton team is mo mostly likely uh, they are working on very uh, coverage, I would say. They, they support many, many users, customers uh, all over the world, uh, but they may do not have many time to investigate uh, how to optimize them. So they, they most likely give you a very good performance, but op not optimal one. But a CK usually give you optimal one performance. That's uh, in in this performance gap uh, is uh, where Triton can learn from the composable kernel like uh, like a, a C plus plus kernel library. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, this is the thing they can learn from us. Okay, thank you very much. Well, yeah. So yeah, but, uh, this this yeah. is like super super great. We we comp like collect all the the material that you have and um. And then maybe like also put at least a link page uh, on our lecture uh, GitHub repository so that we can link to um, oh. the, the kernel that you shared. And maybe can we share your uh, the presentation, the slides there also? Is this possible? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You you can share the slide. Uh, I I think I send the slide to you, to you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have it already. Thank you very yeah. much. Then I I uh, uploaded it. Did uh, you need my I paste the link in the in the chat or Discord? Sure. Okay. If you have a link, uh, please please share it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will 
Um, uh, can do it also on the Rackham channel, maybe. Then it's like because otherwise this is here lost. Uh, and then we can put it. Cool. Yeah. Then I would like to thank everybody for for joining us here. And um, yeah, uh, then, then we have like I think two or three weeks now um, break before our next session, which will be about uh, Intel GPUs. And uh, once again, like uh, let's let's give a thumbs up and heart for uh, for song for this super nice presentation. And I would like. Really love if we in the future also could have like more uh, AMD stuff here that we get like a mix of all the different <laughs> GPU types and uh, yeah thank you very yeah, much yeah definitely thanks all yeah thanks Andrews okay. good then everybody have a nice uh, rest remaining uh, Saturday wherever you are uh, and see you soon on Kuda Mode bye everyone thank you so much bye, -bye.